Join me in welcoming Fire Chief De Stefano for a few remarks. Thank you, Chief Tobio. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today, members of our select board, Chairman Palillo, Vice Chair Dash, Member Epstein, Town Administrator Garvin, Assistant Police Chief, as well as Representative Rogers, active and retired police, firef police and firefighters, our military veterans, and town residents. We're here to remember our 343 brothers killed on 9-11, the 37 Port Authority and 23 NYPD officers, thousands of New Yorkers, as well as the four Belmont residents who perished in the attacks. The civilians and service members killed at the Pentagon and those who perished aboard United Flight 93 while trying to overthrow the terrorists. They were heroes, one and all, who only expected to work at their office, take a trip to the West Coast, pull another shift in the firehouse or in the patrol car. As we reflect on their lives and memorialize those who exemplified the best of us, our for them, fallen brothers are with us. They stand among us whispering, thank you for not forgetting us, but remember the others as well. Who are the others? While just under 3,000 people were killed on the 9-11 attacks in the towers, over 4,300 others have died from health issues related to the attack. Approximately 15,200 emergency personnel are encompassed by the WTC health program, and almost 75%, or 11,300, have already been diagnosed with a 9-11 related health issue. More than 250 FDNY firefighters have died from 9-11 related diseases to date. The unfortunate truth is that mesothelioma and other asbestos related diseases have a 20 to 30 year latency period. So it's likely that the terror attacks of 9-11 will continue to claim victims for years to come. There are so many reasons to remember 9-11. The way ordinary Americans placed in extraordinary circumstances rose to the occasion, the resolve of our military service members, and the resilience of our nation. The heroism of firefighters, police, and others who, knowing the danger, responded and, con and conducted the largest rescue of trapped and endangered people ever undertaken. All are examples of America and Americans of whom we can be proud. Every year we remember the fallen of 9-11. Across the nation, some people continue to live 9-11 every day. Let's remember those people as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chief DiStefano. Next, we'll hear from Assistant Police Chief Hurley. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of Chief McIsaac, and all the men and women of the police department, I want to thank you for coming today and showing your support. Um, I was watching TV last night, and one of the specials about the 9-11, there was a big sign down at Ground Zero saying, we will never forget. And, you know, it really struck me as it's something that we promised that back then we would never forget. And, you know, as time goes on, you know, life gets in the way kind of people tend to forget about what happened but it's important for us to be here it's important for us to remember all the sacrifices many people made and all you know the lives of those that were lost and um, once again I want to thank you on behalf of the department thank you assistant chief Hurley Mark Palillo chair of the select board please come forward Thank you, Chief. Good morning, everyone. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today to commemorate the 21st anniversary of the horrific attacks on our country on September 11, 2001. On behalf of my colleagues on the select board, Town Administrator Patrice Garvin, and the Town of Belmont, I want to thank Chief DeStefano, Assistant Chief Tobio, members of the Belmont Fire Department for today's memorial event. I also want to thank all of you in attendance today, we recognize Representative David Rogers here as well. We will never forget September 11, 2001. We all watched, unbelievably, in horror, 
as the terrorist attacks left nearly 3,000 people dead in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Sadly and tragically, the town of Belmont lost three of its own on that day. Edward Hennessy Jr., Peter Friedman, and Carlos Montoya. That day is forever seared into all of our memories. The pain, the terror, the tremendous loss, and of course, the acts of bravery and courage by many, particularly the first responders, the fire department, and police department personnel of New York City, many of whom lost their lives that day, doing what they dedicated their lives to, saving other people's lives. We owe them a debt of gratitude that we can never repay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we must rededicate ourselves to doing everything we can to defend and protect our country, our state, our town against those who want to do us harm. And we must continue to support the families who lost loved ones on that tragic day. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Palillo. Father Tom, the Belmont Fire Department Chaplain, will now share some thoughts. Great honor to be the chaplain to our amazing fire department and uh, very happy to be here with you this morning. On this 21st anniversary of the despicable attacks on our country, we turn to the source of our being, our creator, our refuge and our strength for peace and security as we remember. We give thanks for the bravery and the sacrifice of those who saved lives as firefighters, rescue crews, or people aboard United 93. We seek comfort and strength for the family and friends of those who died, and healing and patience to the survivors of the attacks who are living with continued physical or psychological pain. We pray for peace in our world as we remember the terrorism that continues to plague our world. Our suffering from the September 11th attacks has awakened in us an awareness of the pain and fear that so many around the world live with each day. May we be awakened to our responsibility to work against oppression and injustice wherever we see it. We pray the God of peace will guide the choices of our world leaders and give them wisdom and discernment, not only as they work to resolve the lasting effects of the 9-11 attacks, but also as they try to alleviate terror of all sorts, from genocide to hunger, from drought to bombings. May their actions bring God's peace to all the people of the world. Our world changed with the September 11th attacks. We have seen how easily buildings can fall and how quickly lives can end. As we remember 9-11, may it remind us that our only true security lies in our working together for the common good. And ultimately, our security is in our God. Today, May we grieve with those who still mourn the loss of loved ones, share memories with those who cannot forget, and draw strength from those who bravely responded and gave their lives to save others. As others have said, we will never forget. Father Tom, thank you for the inspirational words. Now, Captain DeMarco, today's shift commander, will read the list of Belmont residents killed on September 11th, 2001. Good morning. Edward Ted Hennessy. Paul J. 
Friedman, Carlos Montoya, Edward Straub. Assistant Chief Hurley will now read the police officer's prayer. When I start my tour of duty, God, wherever crime may be, as I walk the darkened streets alone, let me be close to thee. Please give me understanding with the, both the young and old. Let me listen with attention until their story's told. Let me never make a judgment in a rash or callous way, but let me hold my patience let each man have his say. Lord, if some dark and dreary night, I must give my life. Lord, with your everlasting love, protect my children and my spouse. Amen. Firefighter Donovan will now read the firefighter's prayer. When I am called to duty, wherever flames may rage, give me the strength to save a life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give it the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to God's will, I must answer death's call, bless with your protecting hand, my family, one and all. Chief DeStefano will now discuss the significance of signal 5555. Thank you, Chief Tobio. The fire service of today is ever-changing, but steeped in traditions 200 years old. One such tradition is the sound of a bell. In the past, as in today, when Belmont firefighters begin their tour of duty, it is the bell that signals the beginning of that day's tour. Throughout the day and night, each alarm is sounded by a bell, which summons those brave souls to fight fires and to place, place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their fellow man. And when the fire is out and the alarm has come to an end, it is the bell again that signals the completion of that call. Traditionally, when a firefighter died in the line of duty, paying the supreme sacrifice, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced a comrade's passing. It is from the Fire Department of New York that many fire departments from around the United States have taken the tolling of the all out to indicate that a firefighter or a person of great significance has fallen. As far back as 1865, the FDNY transmitted their signal 5555 over the telegraph wires to all street boxes in the city to announce the death of Abraham Lincoln. The Belmont Fire Department signal of 2222 symbolizes that the firefighter's job is finished, their mission complete, and that they may now return home following a job well done. We utilize these traditions as symbols which reflect honor and respect on those who have given so much and served so well. To symbolize the devotion that these brave souls had for their duty, a special signal of two rings, four times each, representing the end of our comrades' duties and that they will be returning to quarters. And so, to those who have selflessly given their lives for the good of their fellow man, their task is completed, their duties well done. To our comrades, their last alarm, they are going home. Captain?
If you would please join me for a moment of silence as we reflect on those affected by the attacks that occurred on September 11th, 2001. First anniversary 9-11 remembrance. Thank you for all attending this important occasion. Color Guard, retire the colors. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Joanna Juvelis. I'm a Belmont resident, former reporter for the Belmont Citizen Herald, current news director for the Belmont Media Center. I've lived in Belmont for 13 years, and I want to thank you. It means so much to me and, and the families of all the victims of 9-11 that you have all taken the time to gather here today for this very special town ceremony. Ten twenty-eight a.m. was the exact time the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed 21 years ago today. Please join me for a moment of silence for the nearly 3,000 innocent people whose lives were cut short on September 11th, 2001. Thank you. I would now like to invite Sachi Capitani, a senior at Belmont High School, to sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you so much, Sashi. You have an incredible voice. And we expect to see you in, 
in the, the lead of the school play this year. Three Belmont residents were on Flight 11, the first airplane to crash into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Edward Hennessy Jr., Paul Friedman, and Carlos Montoya. My cousin, John Katsimatidis, worked for Cantor Fitzgerald, which was located on the 95th floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. There are people in our lives we feel a strong connection to, and John was one of those people in my life. No matter how much time goes by, it does not get any easier for the loved ones left behind. I have a story I'd like to share with everyone here today about how I discovered this tree. And in case you haven't figured it out, this is the tree. <laughs> I was writing a story about the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and how Belmont reacted to the tragedy. I learned through the Belmont Historical Society, apologies, now I know how Mr. Taylor felt on graduation. <laughs> I learned through the Belmont Historical Society that this Norway maple, also known as a Crimson King tree, was planted in memory of the victims of 9-11 on October 25th, 2001. Many of you here today were at that groundbreaking ceremony 21 years ago. During my research for the story, I determined where the tree was planted and came to take a look at it. And this is when I learned there was no plaque to identify it. Through further investigation and with the help of our town's former tree warden, I learned the tree was donated by Sinclair Weeks, Belmont resident, owner of Hartney Graymont. I tracked him down and he helped me find the missing plaque. And with the help of the town administrator's office, the select board, the public works department, the Belmont Historic District Commission and Brown and Hickey Funeral Home, the plaque has now been installed and will be unveiled today. And I never thought I would feel connected to a tree like I do with this particular one. We are gathered here today not to mourn, but to celebrate the lives of our loved ones lost, which this tree symbolizes. I will now read a statement from Sinclair Weeks, who couldn't be here today. September 11th, 2001 was an infamous day for our country, directly affecting families across the United States and here in our community. Tragically, Belmont lost three people in the terror attacks on 9-11. Paul Friedman, Edward R. Hennessy Jr., and Carlos Alberto Montoya, all young men in the prime of their lives. We will always remember and honor them. My company, Hartney Graymont, a tree and landscape firm decided to memorialize victims in a number of towns we served by planting memorial trees on town and city property. The trees would both beautify these spaces and remind us of friends and family members lost on 9-11. Later that fall, we planted over 15 memorial trees in Metro Boston. Belmont is my hometown and I'm glad to see this tree still thriving here on town land. I am also glad that we now will have a permanent plaque to honor all the victims of the terror attacks on 9-11. I would like to thank the people of Belmont for accepting this tree and everyone who made installing this memorial plaque possible today, Sinclair Weeks. I'd now like to invite Victoria Hasi, president of the Belmont Historical Society to come and address the crowd. Can everybody hear me? Great. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank Joanna for inviting me to share some comments today. I consider it an honor to be part of the ceremony and I want to greet all of you, townspeople, friends, families, and what a great turnout for, for this, this event today. So uh, September 11th, as you know, was a 
global, had a global impact on the world around us. And as events unfolded that day, one common phrase seemed almost immediately to emerge. And that phrase was, never forget. And it was, it was more, more regularly it was seen on posters, banners at the scene, buttons, um, t-shirts. And the words really seemed to underscore what we were all feeling. We never wanted to forget the events that took place. Well, I knew I had heard similar versions of that expression before. And as it turns out, lest we forget, had been associated with past wars, particularly World War I and tragedies and sacrifices that had been made. But further research about the origin actually came from the Bible. So in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, it was recorded by Moses who wrote that book. And he wrote that book, Deuteronomy, to remind the people of their history. So it was under the chapter heading titled, Obedience Commanded. And the verse, starting in verse 9, says, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. So today we find ourselves gathered to rehearse and remember and to create new memories, both individually and for the community, around that never forget phrase. But how do we keep this slogan alive? How do we safeguard and remember the deep meaning of these words, lest we forget? Well, how can we accomplish this command, you're asking? Who's the we? So to answer that question, I want to tell you that Belmont is fortunate to have an organization whose mission is to collect, preserve, and to promote, which means to teach our local history. That, that organization, the Belmont Historical Society, was founded in the 1930s. It was reactivated in the 60s. And with the dedication of the Memorial Library on Concord Avenue, there's a room in there called the Claflin Room that was particularly created and designed to hold our archival collection. That room is the headquarters today of the Belmont Historical Society. It's staffed by volunteers that are dedicated to the organization five days a week. And we also, in addition to keeping and maintaining an archival collection of there, uh, pre present programs September through May that promote the history programs and events, uh, celebrating the uniqueness of our town. Thank you, Victoria. A poetry contest was held by the Belmont Times, a digital youth magazine sponsored by the Belmont Youth Commission. Participants in the contest were asked to write a poem about this memorial tree. And the winning poem was written by Chenery sixth grader Asher Cohen. Congratulations, Asher. Asher will now read the winning poem titled, One Tree Can Make a Difference. Let's make sure this is the right height. Hello, okay. The date was in September. Something happened to remember. The Twin Towers, our source of pride, had crumbled. Voices silenced, fearful words mumbled. But what we took as a new foundation will last beyond that one generation. One tree cannot make any difference. And yet one tree makes all the difference. Thank you.
Well done, Asher. Thank you so much. Our state senator, <laughs> William Brownsberger, and Anne Marie Mahoney were select board members 21 years ago who witnessed the groundbreaking for this tree. The article is actually on a poster behind me as well as your program. And again, that's how I discovered the tree through the Belmont Historical Society. They keep these clippings. I'll now invite Senator Brownsberger to the microphone. Thank you, Joanna, for bringing us together. I'm, I'm State Senator Will Brownsberger, and I'm here with my colleague, Representative Rogers also uh, from the state legislature. Uh, it, was, it was my privilege to be here in 2001. Um, it's probably as for many of you, it's sort of all flooding back, right? Uh, you know, you remember when somebody first told me a plane hit the, the tower, I said, no, that, that, that didn't happen. That didn't happen, you know, and then is that a real picture? And, and slowly the, you know, it all filters in and, and all the, you know, again and again, get, a, get hit with it. Um, and, and, and we all imagined, we weren't there, but we all imagined what people on the planes, what the people in the buildings experienced. You know, alarm. Alarm turning into dread, then to frank terror. Probably for most of them, not too much pain, but play that to get it again. Then, of course, the families who were, you know, grieving the loss of a loved one, but but having to play it again and again in that public conversation about what had happened to see the images again and again, not be able to rest from it. The image that's hardest for me to contemplate without choking up, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting through that without choking up. But you can see it. You can see the guys in their turnout gear going up the stairs. I can see them in that stairwell. You know, the sweat pouring off of them on the ninth floor, the tenth floor. You're looking up, you know, listening. What's going to happen? And then, boom, you know, it's all gone. So for me, uh, you know, I, I think of all the victims. But for me, when I think of 9-11, I think Fire Department of New York, FDNY. And for me, the, the event is really about our firefighters, our police officers, ultimately our soldiers who choose to put themselves in harm way, harm's way to protect us and our freedoms and bad things do happen. So thank you, Joanna, for giving us the occasion to honor them and remember and share the pain of all of the victims and their families. Thank you. Now my pleasure to introduce Anne Marie Mahoney. Let's see how we do this. This should be good. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, this is fine. All right. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you everyone for being here. After 21 years, what do we remember? 
The horror of that day is seared into our minds and hearts. We recall every detail of that stunningly beautiful Tuesday turned into unbearable pain and loss, but courage and sacrifice as well. I remember the tree planting day, standing here on a cool, cloudy morning with Will and Bill Monahan, and with Carol Hurley, who worked in the police department and whose army son was posted at the Pentagon, but he was safe. With Stretch Foley, Medal of Honor recipient, who knew horror, courage, and death in Vietnam. We came together that day to mourn Ted Hennessy, Paul Friedman, and Carlos Montoya. What do we hold on to today? Peggy Noonan wrote a column for the Wall Street Journal on the fifth anniversary of 9-11, which came to be known as, I just called to say I love you. She describes the messages that those on the doomed aircraft sent to loved ones. She wrote, something terrible had happened. Life was reduced to essentials. Time was short. People said what counted, what mattered. It has been noted that there is no record of anyone calling to say, I never liked you, or you hurt my feelings. Uh, no one negotiated past grievances or said, vote for Smith. Amazingly or not, there is no record of anyone damning the terrorists or saying, I hate them. No one said anything unneeded, extraneous, or small. Crisis is a great editor. When you read the transcripts that have been released over the years, it is all so clear. Noonan continues, this is what I get from the last messages. People were often stronger than they know, bigger, more gallant than they would guess. And this, we're all lucky to be here today and able to say what deserves saying. And if you say it a lot, it won't make it common and so unheard but known and absorbed. This tree could be a symbol of horror and hate and unimaginable loss. However, this tree instead can be a reminder to us that life is precious. Living takes courage and love. Can our lasting memories of 9-11 be about unselfish bravery and unconditional love? Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne Marie. It is now time to, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's now time to introduce our select board, Mark Palillo, Adam Dash, and Roy Epstein for a very special presentation. It's been an interesting day with this microphone, Joanna, thank you. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Um, it's a pri privilege and honor of, of folks to be here today to rededicate this beautiful tree and to also finally you know, place the plaque that should have been placed here 21 years ago. So uh, on behalf of the select board, uh, my colleagues, Vice Chair Adam Dash, a uh, member of Roy Epstein, uh, Town Administrator Patrice Garvin, I uh, want to thank Joanna for gathering us here today to, as you say, Joanna, to celebrate the memory of those that were lost. God bless you for doing this. And thank you all for attending as well. Uh, certainly, as others have noted, uh, it was a day that will be forever seared in our memories, uh, a day of pain and horror and tragedy uh, when we lost nearly 3,000 people with, within our country. Uh, and But also a day of courage and, and sacrifice by many, particularly our first responders. Um, we had a ceremony earlier today at the fire department, and I acknowledged the loss that was uh, realized by members of the, both the um, fire and police departments of New York. God bless them. Uh, they were doing what they were trained to do and what they dedicated their lives to, and that is saving other pe people's lives. And many of them lost their lives. So again, the, uh, on behalf of the select board in the town of Belmont, I want to read this proclamation um, uh, for the town. Town of Belmont, Massachusetts, select board proclamation. 
Whereas the 11th of September marks the anniversary of an egregious attack on the United States, and henceforth this day gives us pause as a community and nation to honor the memory of those who were lost and those who united in response, including first responders and volunteers. And whereas on September 11, 2001, three residents of the Belmont community, Edward, Edward Hennessy Jr., Peter Friedman, and Carlos Montoya, were among the 2,977 people killed. And whereas a Norway maple tree was donated to the town of Belmont by Hartney Graymont, honoring the memory of the victims of September 11, 2001, and whereas October 25, 2001, a groundbreaking ceremony for the September 11th Memorial Tree was held and the tree was planted near the school administration building here at 644 Pleasant Street and whereas September 11th, 2022 marks the date of a dedication ceremony of a plaque identifying the memorial tree donated by Hartney Graymont, mounted by Brown and Hickey Funeral Home in Belmont. And now therefore be it resolved that the select board of the town of Belmont joins with our community in a day of remembrance for those lost and those who united in response on September 11, 2001, and that the tree planted near 644 Pleasant Street be marked by a plaque delineating its purpose as a place of honor and remembrance. Select Board, Mark A. Palillo, Chair, Adam Dash, Vice, Vice Chair, Roy Epstein, Member. Uh, I don't know whether there are members of the families that are here today. I know that, um, I understand from Joanna, that Susan Keller here may be here to accept uh, this proclamation. So Susan, please come up. I don't know if any members of family members of Peter Freeman or Carlos Montoya are here. If not, um, I'm happy to give them the plaque. So Susan, on behalf of the select board, I want to present you this proclamation. Why don't you come up here and take a picture with us. God bless you. Victoria Hess? Yeah, Victoria Hess. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Okay. I think other others that I want to present to is uh, Victoria Haas from the Belmont Historical Society. Victoria? Is she still here? Yeah. There she comes. Victoria, on behalf of the select board, I'm going to present you with this proclamation. Thank you. God so bless much. you. Go in our files. Okay, great. So we will make certain that these other, um, I don't know if anyone else here from any of the families, uh, anyone here from Graymont, Hartney, uh, but we'll make certain that they also receive these proclamations. So again, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you on behalf of coming here. And the final, where did Joanna go? Here, come on up, Joanna, again. You're like a, a up and down here. God bless you. We did want to present a proclamation to you as well. My vice chair continues to remind me who I need to give it to, but thank you, Joanna. God bless you for organizing today's event. It is now time to unveil the plaque. And thank you, Mark, Adam, and Roy. I've asked Dan Hager with Hartney Graymont to do the honors of unveiling the plaque today because Sinclair Weeks couldn't be here and Robert Brown with Brown and Hickey also couldn't be here. I, I did want them to do the honors and I, I honestly want to call out Robert Brown with Brown and Hickey. He did, he did do a lot to help with today.